Hey there, and welcome to Transit Trends. I'm Jeff Wood. And I am Erica Brennis. So excited to be back in San Francisco. Last time it was a lot colder. Today we have the sunshine. So we brought the show outside. We're in Jeff's backyard, and it is so pretty. I feel like we're like channeling that show uh, between two ferns. Although we're just like underneath a tree, but that's Maybe it's just underneath the tree. Yeah, that's, underneath that's a tree, <laughs> aka transit trend. So uh, we're going to continue the conversation because there's just so many layers to it, but about technology and transportation, and specifically talk about the connected car. So what is the connected car? Well, that's the car that most of us drive these days that uh, can track where we're going, when we're going there, how long it takes us to get there all those sort of things and the very valuable data that can be used for a lot of different things. And uh, it can be used to improve just the overall transportation experience, right? And what I think about first is cars that are connected on, on like, a, like a train, but that's like not really, train. like a yeah. choo-choo train, but it's not really what it's about. It's yeah. about you know the data connection. But I think there's a lot of interesting applications for the connected car in that sense. If you think about it from a collection standpoint, on the roads. If it's snowing outside, you're gonna know where to salt the roads. All of the roads don't need to be salted, obviously, but some of the roads might. So you're gonna actually end up with some a situation where you have less pollution from the salting. Something I'm really looking forward to also is the ability to collect pollution data. So if you're on a major freeway, you have this issue where certain freeways in certain neighborhoods are creating a lot of particulate matter, creating a lot of issues with asthma for young children and other folks with respiratory issues. So if you're able to collect that data in real time, the weather report that night might be, hey, stay out of these specific places, or here's mitigation for these areas that we really need to clean up, like ports and other things. So yeah. there's a lot of possibilities uh, for this as well. Yeah, just in general, from transportation planning, you know, if there's really heavy traffic at one intersection, maybe adjust the red lights or that sort of thing. So we got the chance to meet up with Ian Macbeth from Transport for London. He's the head of Automotive and Intelligent Mobility for TFL. It was such a great conversation, uh, but we wanted to talk to him about how that connected car is improving transportation management in London. Connected cars are here now, and most cars have got connectivity in them in terms of the car radio, sat nav, that kind of stuff. But increasingly you're having that e-call systems and telematics providing information to central control systems. And that starts to give you the ability to manage the network in terms of traffic management. And it gives us a, 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 an amount of data that we've never had before. All the information from connected vehicles can pretty much tell us where every vehicle is, where it's coming from, time of day, we can start to pattern and model that kind of stuff. And we can get to the point where the system becomes so self, almost prescient, that it recognizes certain patterns of things happening, predicting before it actually happens and taking preventative measures. So that might be changing the traffic signaling timing. It might actually be directing people to different routes. But it takes most transportation agencies so long to get financing approved and new technology implemented, by the time it is, it's outdated. Because of the pace of change of technology, all we know is that whatever we look and specify today, in five years from now, it's probably going to be verging on obsolete. And that's a real challenge for a public authority because if we invest in something now, public procurement takes a little while to come through the system, by the time we've actually got it on the ground, it may be obsolete within a few years, but we could be paying for it for 10, 15 years down the line. Transit agencies also face a challenge when it comes to updating their systems. Much of the traffic technology we have in today is about 50 years old. It's kind of 1960s stuff, and it, it, it does a job. Um, but it's all obsolete now, and, and there's people, stuff written in weird programming languages that only one or two people left can actually reprogram anymore. And so the, the, the challenge is to actually use, use new technology going forward and how we can replace those traffic control systems with new, new data. Despite the incredible amount of information available through the connected car, not all drivers are open to the idea of being tracked by their vehicle. So yeah, there's gonna be a trade-off between what people are willing to accept in privacy for services delivered and things like that. And that's gonna be an interesting discussion going forward. Again, the data privacy with cars, 
versus mobile phones is a really interesting, it's an interesting conundrum, I suppose, um, because people are really happy to be tracked with a mobile phone. They don't necessarily realize they're being tracked, but every time you hit the upgrade on your latest software on your phone, nobody ever reads the terms and conditions on that. It resets all your privacy stuff, it sets all the tracking stuff back in there. People generally don't seem to have a problem with that. Yet, as soon as you talk about that with driverless cars and connected cars, people start to get, oh, I'm not sure I want to be tracked. Um, so there's a real behavior change, engagement type of challenge there ahead of us. So you don't read these terms and conditions when you're on your phone, uh, but for some reason, when it comes to the idea of collecting all the data from your car, a lot of people have some pushback, but I'm like, it's the same thing. So it's gonna be a mindset shift, right? You know, and getting to know this better about how all this data is being used, but the privacy issue is huge. Yeah, and there's gonna be a lot of people that don't like it at all. They're just not gonna to want to give away their data, and that's fine. I just think that there's a lot of value to the data that it gives us. And I don't think it's necessarily has to be too much of an intrusion. And, and it's interesting what Ian mentioned about cars that are leased versus cars that are owned, mm -hmm. right? And the ownership might be able to opt out of being able to collect their data and the, the folks that are leasing the cars might not. And I mean, it's not just like the difference between, okay, I own my car, but even when I have bought a car, really the bank owns it because I had to take out a loan to buy that car. Um, so yeah, who owns this data? Uh, there's also the whole issue of um, car shares coming up, you know, whether it's Lyft or Uber or Car2Go, I mean, you're getting into a car, you're sharing lots of data, and it's not a car you own. So who owns that data and, and what all comes out of it? Yeah. It's, really, it's really interesting. So that wraps up episode four of Transit Trends. Huge shout out and a big thank you to Ian Macbeth for taking the time uh, while you were in Austin to talk to us for this episode. It really got conversation going between just Jeff and I, so we hope it does the same for you. Uh, on episode five, We'll have Gabe Klein, so you don't want to miss that. He always has great stuff to say. Uh, and the best way not to miss it is to subscribe to our new YouTube channel. So you might have noticed Transit Trends changed homes. So we're now under the Moval North America YouTube channel. That is because Moval, thankfully, sponsors Transit Trends. That's who I work for. Uh, so a lot of people subscribe to the old channel and then we lost you and we want you back. So make sure you subscribe to our new YouTube channel. You can also find the link daily to the show on Jeff's email. You can go to thedirecttransfer.com and click on the button at the top right of the website um, and you can get all the information that we send out every day. Subscribe. Also, if you liked this episode and you're loving this content, please share it on social media. You can obviously find us on Twitter, uh, but let's keep this conversation going and get more people involved. Thanks so much. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. See you next time.